Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, I thought it's time to start my latest project. Um, my high voltage experimental projects board. Yes, now at the moment you can't really see much on it. Got a couple of transformers here. This little one is going to power things like the chips, such as the 555 timer, MOSFET drivers, and other things. This transformer is going to be for more well, the business end, when it's powering the MOSFETs and stuff like that. And I'm also going to make this so an external transformer can be hooked in and bypass this transformer, so if I need to use a bigger transformer, if there's a bigger amount of current that needs to be used, then no problem. So I'll be able to tinker around with this and do all kinds of stuff. Speaking of tinkering, Got me one of these. Friend gave this to me, so now I'm a true geek. Pretty soon I'll be attempting to learn Python and stuff like that, and maybe even control a little, a few little things with it. Anyway, okay, it's I'm um, bashing the camera about with my tremendous bulk here. So my, I installed the Xbox Media Center thingy on this. And it does kind of work. And um, the thing that came with this, the uh, operating system on the other um, flash drive, I don't know what's wrong with that, but for some reason it won't accept any keyboard input. However, on this one and all the other OS's I've tried on this thing, no problem whatsoever. Keyboard works absolutely fine. So, that's kind of strange. Another kind of strange thing about this, let's just try to play a video on this. Okay. Here's that video I uploaded as an April Fool's joke, which some people still haven't seemed to manage to get. See, it shows up there, a little video preview thing, but if I try to play it... There's sound, but no picture. What now? Those damn teachers! Just because I dropped the pen in the test I was doing, off my yeah, so I don't know what's going on there. Probably need to download some codecs. Strange thing is, looks as if the codecs are there because it shows the preview picture on the thing. Alright, now I've finally got the camera to record again. The little thing in the SD card is missing, so I have to put a piece of tape over it to make it work, you know, like a video cassette so I can record on it again. Anyway, I thought while I'm making the power supply for the thing, I thought I'd just give you a little tour of what I've done on it so far. I already talked about the two transformers. I'm putting the rectifier circuit in, which is this rectifier here. It charges up these two capacitors via this resistor here. And when the voltage gets to about 18 volts, this relay will trip. And I'll turn on these other relays, which will which are these two relays here. Which I haven't wired up yet, but I will. One of them will short out this resistor so we get the full voltage, we get the full power from the transformer, and the other one will connect it to the output. Anyway, I thought I'd show you how a relay can produce a high voltage, just to show that it is working. I'll cycle it on and off a few times. Nice satisfying clunk there. Now I've got a neon light. I'm going to put this across the power supply. And basically, if a neon light shines, if a neon if a neon light lights, that's enough to give you a shock. But as you can see when I connect it to the power normally, and this is only about 20 volts. See, no light from the light. But I'll put it across the coil pins of the relay. I think that pretty much explains it. Okay, so now we've got a diode connected across the relay pins. And as you can see, the neon does not light up anymore. So that's why it's a good idea to put a diode across relay pins if they're going to be connected to things like transistors and integrated circuits and stuff like that. Got all this bit built. With the three relays, you can't really see one of the relays because it's behind these two filter capacitors. I've added in a terminal block 
And just as a load test, I've connected up the exciter. Just going to plug the transformer in. Okay, no problem, it's working. Oh, we have power. Right, well, I've wired up power switch now. So this will switch the transformers on, and this will switch the transformers off. And this I'm going to use as a dead man switch, which is going to go between this transformer and the rectifier, because I thought it'd be better to do that on the low side of the transformer. That way, I'm not going to be touching something that's connected up to live mains. Also, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the other thing with making this um, being powered from an external transformer. I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to do that. Anyway, I've got to turn this from a latching switch to a momentary switch. Okay, so here is the switch apart. I mean, apart. All I need to do is take this little pin out of the thing that it goes in the, into there. Now I made the dead man switch, which is right here. Wired up the exciter just for a, as a load test. So press the switch down. And there we go. Can't help myself. Gotta have a little bit of fun. If the camera can see this. Oh, we don't want no fires. Not just yet. Well, I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna get on and build some circuits to put onto this, so I'll see you all later. Because this video is getting too long already.